Hey everyone, welcome back to Break Take Stacking. Uh, just before I jump into today's video, I just want to wish everyone a uh, Merry Christmas. I have not uh, done a video since then. I was planning on doing one just before Christmas, but it uh, got pushed back, things got hectic, and it was the holidays, so it's just I had some time off and I wasn't able to uh, to get a video out, you know, on Boxing Day or just uh, on the Sunday or anything like that. So I've just kind of uh, been relaxing and enjoying the uh, the Christmas break and the holidays. So I do hope that you've been uh, enjoying yours as well and uh, I do apologize for not having uh, any videos out uh, in the past couple of days but I do plan on getting back into schedule unfortunately New Year's is coming up as well and that might uh, push back my, my, my plans for future videos as well but yes even though it's slow at the very tail end here of uh, 2021 I do plan on uh, you know uh, having a big year in 2022 as far as uh, my silver stacking and my gold stacking plans here but yes that's just uh, something I want to get uh, get out of the way off the top here is a uh, uh, belated Merry Christmas to everyone and hope everyone has been enjoying their uh, enjoying their holidays. But getting into today's topic, I saw it was a, a pretty interesting article that was going over uh, some commonly or frequently asked questions, uh, you know, uh, about investing in gold and silver. Now that's something I don't uh, tackle uh, too much on my channel because I don't personally stack or buy silver and gold as an investment uh, right now, currently at the moment. Uh, mine is basically you know that hedge against inflation and uh, stacking as a physical savings account. Maybe down the road I can look into the physical gold and silver and looking at that as an investment if I plan on flipping things in the future. But right now, my motto of trying to get the cheapest silver available. But right now, my you know philosophy, they use philosophy a lot in the article, that's why it was stuck in my head. But I usually say my strategy. Right now, my strategy is trying to get the cheapest gold and silver uh, that I can get my hands on. Uh, there are certain times where I will go for, you know, the American Silver Eagle, the Type 2 when it came out, or, you know, here and there I'll spend a little bit money on more expensive or higher premium product, but for the most part, the weight of my stack, I'm trying to just get the, uh, you know, the cheapest that I can. So if you were to look at the way that I stack silver and gold, you would probably say that's a horrible investment. You've just lost money on it. You're in a hole right now because you've made these purchases. And you'd be 100% right. You'd be 100% right in what you're seeing, uh, and but you would be wrong uh, thinking that I bought it as just an investment. You know, I, I plan on stacking for decades, so you know, 20 years from now, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind obviously the price to have doubled or tripled what I bought the uh, my silver and gold at this time. Uh, so, you know, down the road, if the spot price does, you know, go up higher and I do make money off the stack, that is all the gravy. Anyways, like I said, that's not something I uh, talk about or have you know many opinions on. But when I do come across an article talking about it, I do like to you know do a video on it, talk about it, and just sort of uh, you know just give my thoughts. Uh, you know, a lot of the time I do agree with what they're saying, but there are some things in some articles where it's you know especially you know the way my mind thinks and the way I stack, I will you know kind of disagree with what they're saying. Uh, it happened a little bit in this article, not too much, and it wasn't something that was. You know egregious or anything but uh, like I said you know my philosophy or strategy is just a little bit different than what they were presenting in this article but anyways I won't ramble on anymore in this intro what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump onto the computer and uh, quickly show you this article okay so this is the article here it's on moneymetals.com and the title is frequently asked questions about gold and silver investing and just uh, going right down here into the first question, it says, since the Fed seems likely to hike interest rates in 2022, should we wait before adding to our gold and silver holdings? Well, too, because I didn't know exactly the correlation or how interest rates uh, and uh, a hike in interest rates, how that would correlate with gold and silver um, prices. As I said, I'm new, fairly new to this, so someone that's been stacking for a decade or has been watching the markets for a decade, they might know the ebbs and flows and the trends to look for, but I wasn't really you know, too knowledgeable about that. So when I saw this, I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, for, for those that were like me that uh, you know wanted uh, an answer to this question, it says, not necessarily. It says, trying to wait for the Fed could prove to be a huge mistake. 
and then they gave this example here that the gold market reached its last major bottom in December of 2012 at uh, 10.50 an ounce. Uh, that coincided with the onset of a uh, rate rising campaign. And it's going further down it says, the lesson is that precious metals markets don't move in lockstep with Fed easing or tightening. Gold and silver prices show virtually no correlation to uh, uh, nominal interest rates. It says here, the, what really matters or what's more important is, uh, the, uh, is the real interest rates, meaning interest rates relative to inflation rates. You gotta always factor in that inflation uh, side of things nowadays. And going on, it says real rates are near their most deeply negative levels ever. So uh, thanks to the recent inflation spike, and real rates can remain negative throughout the Fed tapering and hiking campaign. So the question here is asking if they should hold off buying gold and silver, uh, you know, because it says that this, the interest rates are looking seeming to be uh, hiked up. And uh, the answer is saying it doesn't really uh, correlate with each other. It's not something that uh, gold and silver prices don't really react to that stuff, uh, you know, one to one. So, you know, it it's up to you what you want to do with it. But they're saying it's not necessarily something that uh, makes too much of a difference. The next question is, what's your overall philosophy when choosing what specific metal products to buy? His answer says, we encourage folks to focus on the lower premium items, so virtually all their investment goes into acquiring the metal itself, which is good advice, you know what I mean? It always makes sense to get the best price on the silver or gold that you're looking for. Uh, now for this, when you're looking at the lowest possible premium, that's not going to include, you know, those American Silver Eagles that everyone loves, not going to be including the Maple Leafs that everyone loves, not going to be including a lot of the coins, you know what I mean? It's going to be a lot of generic stuff, and, you know, that's the stuff that carries the, uh, the lower premium. So if you want to be going and stacking a, a monster box full of Maple Leafs, this isn't something that uh, uh, the philosophy that you'd be looking for, you know what I mean? Because you would not be paying the lowest price for the silver that you're buying, but that doesn't mean what you're doing is wrong. If you want to get a monster box full of American Silver Eagles, that is what you want to do. That's what you want to do with your money. That's what you want to do with your stack. And you know, go right ahead. I know plenty of people have, you know, um, some have multiple ones. That's a very popular way of stacking silver. Uh, but in this particular question, uh, the the answer they were going for is to, you know, get the lowest price on silver. And that just kind of happens to go with uh, uh, the way that I think about stacking silver as well. It says, most importantly, that means avoiding so-called rare, graded, or proof coins, uh, which generally carry high premiums, unrecoverable upon uh, a later sale. So yes, that makes complete sense for this overall philosophy that they're talking about here. And this isn't the only way to stack or the right way to stack. I'm sure there's a lot of people, uh, I know that there's plenty of people that have a stack of uh, you know, slabs. They have those uh, PCGS uh, cases. I really like those where they hold like 20 or 25 slabbed coins. I like looking at all those Morgans and Peace Dollars. But again, it's not cheap. It's, it's really not cheap to uh, to be stacking and collecting that stuff. Uh, for me, like, like I just said there, I do kind of consider that stuff more on the collecting side than the stacking side. But in this article, they're talking about investing in silver. So it's kind of just like, a, so it's sort of a catch-all blanket term that they're using here, of the uh, investing. And uh, you know, it, with the higher premiums attached to the stuff, to the, attached to the products you're buying, it is going to be harder to be making, uh, you know, any money back on that uh, that silver or gold that you have. So as far as an investment goes, it's not the the greatest short term. You know, you could hold on to it for a long time, and it may add up into some you know, numismatic value down the road. But uh, as far as like a traditional investment, buying that stuff doesn't really uh, turn much of a quick profit. It says you will mostly, you will most certainly be better off if you stick with bullion coins, bars, and rounds, where the cost is mostly determined by the spot price. And it says within that group, bars and rounds almost always offer the best value. So, yes, I don't actually buy physical gold and silver 
as uh, an investment per se. Mine's more of a hedge against inflation and uh, sort of like a physical savings account. But there are some people, you know, who have been stacking for a while and, uh, you know, they've seen the recent prices. And for a lot of people, uh, you know, with their dollar cost average, the, the most recent prices has, you know, doubled what they've bought their uh, silver at. So for them, that's been a pretty good investment for them because they've doubled their money. But for a lot of people that are just getting into it now, it's going to take a long, long time for them to double the value of their stack just from spot price going up compared to what their dollar cost average is. So uh, yeah, for me, uh, as an investment right now, it would be uh, you know a terrible investment, you know, just because I'm not making money on it at the moment, but I'm not looking at it that way. And if all goes well and my plan goes that I'm going to be stacking for the long term, you know, decades down the road, uh, you know, I obviously would like to see the spot prices go up. And, you know, that obviously that would mean the, uh, the value of the stack going up too, but it's not the primary reason why I'm stacking. Third question here, kind of like a, a spillover from a, a very popular subject and topic from last year is, will there be a silver shortage? And it says, uh, shortages are a symptom of central planning gone awry. And it's uh, some people still don't believe that we're out of the current shortage that they said that the, that we were in last year. A lot of people still believe that the shortage is still real, and that you know the prices that we're seeing is reflecting that. And then continuing on, it says a properly functioning market economy, price signals cause uh, supply to respond quickly to fluctuations in demand. Those crucial price signals have been distorted by massive uh, interventions into the economy by the government and Federal Reserve. And getting down a little bit further into the, uh, the answer here, and it's something that we've been dealing with and continue to deal with heading into 2022, it says shortage of retail gold and silver products would mean premium spikes and possibly a surge in spot price as well. So... I haven't really been seeing the second part of that coming true, where it's the, the surging of the spot price. Sure, it did go up that little bit when they were talking about the silver squeeze uh, damn close to a year ago now. You know, time is flying, but all that stuff that was going on with the, the short squeeze because they were trying to, to make silver act the same way that GameStop and the meme stocks were going. Uh, so we didn't quite see the, the spike in price and the sustained higher prices, but uh, the premiums we did see skyrocket. And uh, unfortunately, those have sustained. And, you know, we're still, like I said, still dealing with it now. And going into some of the U.S. Mint problems, it says over the past couple of years, the dysfunctional U.S. Mint, a government bureaucracy, has consistently failed to produce ad uh, what is it, adequate quantities of its gold and silver American coins. It says demand continues to strain availability inventories, making privately minted bars and rounds a better value than ever. So yes, the U.S. Mint, um, there, there's a whole thing saying that the, the reason they needed to suspend the pre-orders of the, the Morgan and Peace dollars because it was a silver shortage. Then they needed to walk that back saying it wasn't a silver shortage, it was a shortage of the, the planchets that they had uh, that they were ordering to actually uh, mint the coins on. And then it came out that it was there was not really a shortage per se, it was just the price of it was more than the US Mint was willing to pay for it. So there, and so this, that's where the shortage came from. The shortage came from not enough silver being purchased at the price they didn't want to purchase it at. They had already set the price for the Morgans and the Peace Dollars at whatever it was, the 83. And even though that's just an insane markup in premium as it is, if they needed to cut into that uh, profit by needing to buy the silver planchets at a higher price, then it, as I said, it would have been cutting into their profit. It continues on, it says, the good news is that those who had hard to get precious metals will be in the driver's seat. They can choose to sell whenever they believe prices, including potential buyback premiums over spot, are high enough. So that's not necessarily true all the time. It's uh, It wasn't true with some other coins, like the, the V75 coins from the, uh, the US Mint. Um, it went exactly as a lot of the flippers predicted. It was going to be red hot for a couple of weeks. You saw that uh, the prices were up in the uh, four digits on eBay. People spending like fifteen hundred dollars on the on some of the uh, the silver products. But then you check back, you know, a month later, six weeks later, and it was well down into the uh, you know the five hundred range. You could uh, pick up a V seventy five if you wanted for between like 350 and 550 I saw. So they were 100% right that the uh, the demand for it would taper off 
fairly quickly, and so would the uh, the amount that you'd be getting on the secondary market trying to sell it. So uh, yeah, it is good if you are a flipper and you do manage to get some of these coins that are hard to get, uh, but I wouldn't be holding on to them uh, for too long because uh, it is a commodity that is uh, definitely uh, hot for a moment and it can you know cool off very quickly. And in that time, you can be losing a lot of the profit that you could have made. And in that time, you could be losing a lot of profit that you would have made if you had just you know bought it and flipped it right away. But yeah, so that was a pretty short uh, article there, just going over some questions there, the three questions that they uh, presented here. And uh, I did read through most of it. I kind of skimmed through a little bit just uh, because this was running a little long. Uh, I will leave a link in the description if you do want to uh, read through the entire article yourself. So yes, that was the article there. And uh, sorry, at the end of the intro there, I said I was going to quickly show you the article, but it did uh, run just a little bit longer. I don't usually read as much of the article as I, as I did with this one. Uh, skim over it. You just try to have bullet points and the main things. But uh, this one, uh, you know, it went a little bit longer, so I do apologize for that. But I'd like to hear from you guys, especially if you do buy silver and gold uh, as an investment. If you're actively looking to, uh, you know, uh, make money off of the uh, the gold and the silver that you purchased in the short term. I would like to hear from you guys because, you know, it's a different way of uh, stacking and looking at things uh, than the way that I do. So just like with the, the articles that have different viewpoints that I like to read, I also like to hear comments from people that have different viewpoints than me because, you know, it could, I'm not saying everybody that uh, has a different opinion of me uh, changes my mind, but if you do come up with a good point, it might be something that uh, I can look at and say, hey, I never looked at it ever that way, never thought of it that way. And uh, you know, you, you could actually change my mind if you come at it and say, hey, you might be looking at it a little bit differently if you look at it this way. I love getting comments like that. Because, like I said, I'm fairly new to this stacking gold and silver. So anytime someone gives me some useful information that I can use, I'm always, uh, I always appreciate it. So yeah, definitely let me know in the comments if you do like stacking as an investment. But I do know from a lot of the familiar faces and a lot of people that I like to, to talk to and uh, always enjoy seeing in the comments, I do know that a lot of you uh, are in the same boat as me where uh, it's not quite an active investment, more of the uh, the hedging and the, uh, the, the physical savings account. Uh, I, as I said, I always like hearing from you guys as well. But that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and uh, hope you come back for the next one. Thank you.